And now for our next reader, I'd like to introduce Francine Walls. Thanks, Peggy. My name's Francine, and the first poem I'm going to read is called Dinner Hour at the Retirement Home. So young then, the waitress could remember by heart the orders from multiple tables of six. One woman wants the entire turkey dinner, hold the cranberries. Another wants peas, not carrots. Both the frail and the energetic rattle the locked door at 5 p.m., then crowd into the dining room, eager for their favorite table. Always something goes cockeyed. The cream goes sour, must be replaced. She runs in that ghastly gold uniform with the name tag over her heart. Mr. Narramore of the architects, Narramore, Bain, and Brady, gives her a smile regardless. So old now, his skin shines red and thin. She carries heavy trays of food for three hours. Management pays for only two and a half hours. The chief cook, Mrs. Evans, keeps a meal warm in the oven for her after her shift. The next poem is called, I'm not taking no for an answer. Mannequins in the store window don't even catch my glance. We're walking down First Avenue on the way to the art museum. I never look at clothes, not having bought a dress in years. That might take shopping, which I don't do. But my friend since college, Deanna the Fashionista, who remembers exactly what she wore to my 50th birthday party, shops a lot. She grabs my arm and points at the mannequin. Will you look at that, she says. That dress is perfect for you reading that poetry stuff. She's tugging me toward the door. Then I'm inside the retail environment. She finds the dress on a rack, grabs it, holds it up to my body. See, she says. She's not listening to me as usual. Buy it. Put your black turtleneck underneath it. Could it hurt you to put a little bit of color in your life? Where is the color, I ask? The dress is black and blue. Just my style, but I'm headed out the door. She caught me by the arm, pulled me back. She could be a linebacker. We're in for a tussle, but a clerk came over, so I looked. Slashes of black paint on blue, not pale blue, not cornflower blue, not sky blue, but gray blue. Not tidy slashes, but big, messy paintbrush swipes of black on blue and the buttons were big. Big blue buttons with black slashes. You'll add bright jewelry, Deanna says, maybe a coral necklace. Women will ask you to leave this dress to you, dress to them in their wills. You'll feel invincible reading your poetry in this dress, she says. You'll be composed for once. Your audience will love looking at this dress if their attention wanders. I'll have you know, I say in response, I'm a pretty good poet. Yes, but look the part Deanna says. So I tried on the dress. Damn it, she was right. Now I'm gonna read from my new book, Hot Off the Press, Waiting for Someone to Find Me, by published by uh, Finishing Line Press. What can go wrong in the desert? You are lost. Your phone, useless. A thunderstorm washes out the road. You drive down a steep hill and cannot get back up. The car gets stuck in the sand. Rocks puncture the gas tank. All the gas leaks out. Flash floods bury the car. Rain soaks your cotton shirt and shorts and the wind picks up. Hiking, you fall off a boulder and knock yourself out. 
Revived, you slip on a sharp rock, cutting your femoral artery. The day gets hotter. You have no hat, no long sleeves. A scorpion, snake, and brown recluse spider, they bite you. You have an allergic reaction. A swarm of bees surrounds you. You run out of water. In the desert, the wrong road can kill you. <laughs> Emergency poem. This is the poem for emergencies. Like the spare batteries and extra gas you pack when you drive into the wilderness. When you discover you are lost, you can press any word in this poem and walk beside calm waters. This poem does not have water, food, shelter, or energy bars, yet courage is hidden in every line. Before you crumple up this poem, feeling danger north, south, west, east, remember love's gift to you, your next breath. Rendezvous. Down to the nameless pond, the geese honking at stragglers, gliding to rest among the reeds, goslings trail in open water. A stellar's jay cries its hoarse cry, the pond in August now low, the foliage thick enough to hamper my trail to the boulder, lying close to the water's edge, the great rock laden with huckleberries, whose roots clutch thin lichen. The maples, already in their changes, drop their yellow messages. Bats emerge at dusk, careen across the pond, sketch jagged streaks in the darkening sky, writing of all things lucid. On the wall in my room, over the coverlet of rosebuds, a painting glows in the dark. The four-masted schooner anchored offshore, while on the sand a skip lies at an angle, gathered around by men in bright sweaters. I imagine the squawk of herons, the scent of salt. The ocean pushes up a river, the river pushes back, then pauses until the tide recedes, pulling the river with it and eons convene as droplets of mist on this near eternal shore. And my last poem is called Blessing. May your life be woven as a Navajo blanket with threads of sky and earth. May you dab your cloth with streaks of lightning, seashells, crystals. May your slippers be shod with cashmere and your pillow be satin smooth. May California poppies line your path with a golden glow. May the flanks of your hills be deep green, glazed with the yellow of mustard blooms. And when you awaken in your blanket of light, may a little child take your hand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francine, and all of our other readers, the readers. For, being, for being part of our inaugural online It's About Time reading number 365. Thank you all so much.